Early Breakfast with Rosie Wright on Times Radio with Personio. Create more impact for your business with easy-to-use HR software that puts people at the heart of everything. Personio. Everything starts with people. The Times this morning has uh, the latest um, allegations levelled at the comedian Russell Brown saying a woman's gone to the Met Police after the Russell Brown uh, investigation. The Telegraph this morning says doctors will be forced off the picket lines. We've just been talking about that story with a Terry. And there's also uh, a picture of the Princess of Wales who is laughing after trying on what's been described as an exploding life jacket while she was visiting uh, the Royal Navy at Air Station in Somerset. Um, she pulled a cord to blow up the jacket was, I think it's fair to say, taken aback by how quickly it inflated. There's a, a fantastic photograph of her laughing on the front page of the Telegraph. And The Guardian has um, Liz Truss. Who crashed the economy? So the paper asks. Uh, Truss blames the bank, but not herself. There's a photograph of her uh, yesterday. She gave a speech. We'll look at the details in just a second. The front page of The Guardian, though, is that Met warns it will take years to clear out rogue officers. We just heard some of that with Terry. We're joining me to go through these stories and many more is Andrew Eborn, barrister, broadcaster and the president of Octopus TV. Andrew, good morning. A good morning, Rosie, and always a delight to join you. So with your barrister hat on, Andrew, what yes. do you make of, you know, the, uh, the sort of the allegations that have been levelled at Russell Brand, the comedian, ones that he strenuously uh, denies, we're now hearing that as in the aftermath uh, of those allegations, someone has gone to the police. This is a separate um, inquiry now that the, the police will be looking at, a separate uh, allegation to the one that had been uh, published over the weekend. What's your analysis of this story? You're interesting, Andrew, because you've got one foot into the media camp and the other one um, with a barrister hat on looking at the legal complexities of someone like this who faces um, allegations of this kind. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And I, I think uh, the most fundamental point of all is that everybody, everybody is entitled to be innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. It doesn't matter about the court of public opinion. It doesn't matter whether you like Russell as a comedian or you hate him as a comedian or it, you had a great encounter with him previously or you agree with his views or don't agree. The question is, was he guilty of the alleged crimes? And that needs to be tested in, in, in an appropriate court of law. But certainly um, the, the Sunday Times, and I watched the Dispatches programme when it came out um, on uh, on Saturday, uh, basically they had a, a number of very serious accusations. And Russell preempted this when at uh, 11.21 on Friday, September the 15th, he put his own video out uh, and, and he's got huge followers, uh, both on Twitter or now X, he's got 11.2 million. And when I checked earlier this morning, that particular one had been seen about sort of 66 million times, mm. that particular video, where he categorically denies it. He says, yes, absolutely. I used to do routines about and confessing how promiscuous I was during this particular period. Um, but every relationship, he says, was consensual. Uh, at the same time, what happens with these sort of cases, the more you put it in the public eye, and there's a balance, the more people are, are likely to turn around and say, uh, hang about, I had an experience similar to this, and therefore it has now been reported. And as you say, this is a, apparently the, the latest thing, is an allegation of a sexual assault in 2003, and the person came forward, apparently it happened in Soho, uh, and the Met have confirmed uh, that they have received this report, uh, but they didn't name Brand and, uh, uh, or announce a formal investigation. One of the big debates, Andrew, will be, you know, this is often uh, a, a trial in the, in the public sphere and the public square already before um, criminal charges have been brought. Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely right. And we have to be very, very careful in the media that we don't prejudice any uh, criminal activity. And there's a balance between freedom of speech and uh, and the public's and public interest and people's right to have a fair trial. And people often say, well, the, the victims or alleged victims have a right to anonymity. Uh, should also the accused have a right to privacy until uh, the due process has been gone through? And there are two aspects to this. And uh, if you look across the pond, what happened with Trump and the recent case with E. e. Jean Carroll, there are two things. There's the criminal side, but also there's defamation. And uh, this is what happens if you're effectively saying, um, and this is what uh, some, some of the alleged victims are saying, is that uh, obviously Russell, um, his response has not been satisfactory. They find it uh, actually offensive. And what they're saying is that uh, effectively he's calling them liars. 
Now, that gives them a right of action in defamation. And it's important to work out that the proof element, so the, the burden of proof, is indeed a lot less in a civil case, where it's what's called the balance of probabilities, as opposed to a criminal case, which is obviously effectively beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, but all of this is going to play out. And there are lots of questions, Rosie, to be answered, not least about uh, who knew what, when, uh, what, and um, all sorts of allegations about using a BBC car to send a 16-year-old round yeah. to Russell's flat. All of those sort of accusations need to be looked at and uh, various questions are answered by who knew what, when, what sort of uh, was the response to these various organisations Russell, Russell worked for. And the processes, and we've had this a lot in the media very recently, um, and there will be more of it, say, well, OK, to what is the process when people complain or they receive a complaint? How often um, is this sort of followed up? And this needs to be very transparent so yeah. that everybody can work out what they do in these circumstances. Yeah, it, well, exactly. You mentioned uh, sort of one of the people who has accused Russell Brand, um, she said um, that his denial of the allegations were insulting. Uh, and there you go, sort of, Andrew, I think you've, uh, you know, brilliantly explained all the different repercussions that will keep on developing over the next few days. Um, let's move on to something else, and that is uh, the comments of uh, Liz Truss, who gave her speech uh, yesterday, rebuffing criticism from Mark Carney, accusing the former Bank of England um, chief of dodging responsibility for low growth. <laughs> she... Yes, absolutely. Who, who plays on? And what I always love, I always play, uh, bad cartoons are brilliant. We, the, the follow, massive downpour we've just had with the heavens open. Uh, Matt's cartoon today says Liz Truss just gives one speech, and look what happens, and it shows two people sitting on top of their, their building with, with the heavens opening. Um, yeah, so basically what this is, former Prime Minister Liz Truss, she issued a robust defence uh, of her brief chaotic time in office and she blamed uh, Mark uh, Carney uh, for being an economic, a part of the economic consensus that kept growth depressed for 25 years, mm. is what she said. Um, and it is interesting that the speech was made on, on Monday at the London-based Institute for Government, uh, which is the public policy think tank. Uh, she defended the mini-budget, uh, the, the chaotic one, the crazy <laughs> budget, uh, which included lower taxes and public spending and cuts to regulation. And she was saying that if that had been implemented, then Britain's growth would be 2% higher by 2030, and private sector investment would jump 10%. Um, it's all sort of pointing fingers, isn't it? And I think this is the problem. He was sort of saying that she tried to create Singapore on the Thames, um, but the trust government instead delivered Argentina on the channel. And, and so they're, they're throwing bandying sort of words around in public. Um, and this story won't go away. Uh, and I think it's um, uh, Liz Trust. Is, and neither uh, will Liz uh, Trust. I mean, that's what's so interesting. Trust, I mean, she no. started her, her sort of speech by saying, well, I'm having a bit of a better September than I was this time last year <laughs> because this time last year of course we were right in the midst of all of that turmoil you know um the queen had just died liz truss is as prime minister and so quickly that all uh, unraveled um i want to talk about uh, something else andrew the times two today i i read this this story i couldn't kind of stop reading it because i found the 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 fact that these uh, they are anonymous writers were prepared to admit these tactics they've been using. The feature is called Stolen a Gym Towel, The Rise of the Posh Pilferer. And we've heard so much about shoplifting uh, recently. We don't imagine, maybe we're naive, that it's coming from the people who can absolutely pay um, for their shopping. But they're choosing to sort of stick it up, stick it to the man, stick it to the supermarket or stick it to the hotel that they've been staying in. No, I, I think that's actually true. Avocados put through the self-checkout as apples, towels stolen from the gym. Uh, not all petty thefts is due to a cost of living crisis, uh, as the headline screams. And they've got a great uh, uh, photo of, of uh, a romantic couple sitting in a very posh restaurant. Uh, and the, the, the chap is lovingly looking at his, his date, saying, um, I put the corkscrew in my bag. That's £10 off the bill already. And, and so there is this sort of confession, which, which people are sort of making, that they're putting through brown rolls as white rolls, because they're not as expensive and so on and so forth. And they say it's not about the cost of living. I think they're sort of uh, this sort of Robin Hood sort of approach to what's happening in this sort of era. And you might remember uh, Winona Ryder. Um, I mean, she basically uh, was convicted of uh, shoplifting after stealing £5,500 worth of designer clothes. Clearly, she could afford that. This happened in Beverly Hills in 2001. And he also had chef. 
Yeah, the chef, Anthony Royal Thompson, yeah. who, who sort That's of right. took cheese and wine from Tesco. Only on Thames in 2012. That's right. What, why is it, Andrew, that you think that people are saying, well, do you know what, if I can, I'm going to get away with it? Well, I think there's... I don't want to glamorise what's effectively a crime, so I would absolutely advise people against it. But the reality is this. Sometimes people need a thrill in their life. And this is what um, shoplifting, certainly in those sort of cases, this is what they, they, they said was was the issue. Um, but what they're saying in this article, that they, if you're taking a bit of extra soy sauce or a bit of wasabi and ginger, which people are now charging for, they say, well, hang about, um, <laughs> Itsu can afford it. It's not going to hurt them. Uh, and therefore, they, they get a sort of sense of uh, achievement, if you like, by having done this petty pilfering. Am I naive? Petty, petty pilfering. Am I na- naive, Andrew? I mean, this, I mean, I just couldn't, I, I had to read all the other news of the day on the way <laughs> and I just kept reading it because I couldn't believe the confessions people were making. One middle class thief dents beer cans then asks for a discount. And then nobody pays for soy sauce, it so says this other anonymous writer, taking yeah. it won't hurt them. That is surely wrong you know we all just walk into itsu and think you know i'll just pretend my sushi box was actually a cheaper one uh, walk out with the soy sauce you know we can't all uh, it just sort of stuns me that people are behaving like that it shouldn't clearly no i i, I think in, in amongst all the snickering I, I i would have to warn that obviously the consequences for doing this uh can be extremely serious and obviously you've got a criminal record for theft and so on and so forth so um, I, I would caution against it is it is a very good read uh, it's written in an amusing style but there are consequences mm. also it does very occasionally happen that you walk out of a shop and you realize you've not paid for something like a meal deal I think I once went home and eaten I had eaten a meal deal and then only realized about two hours later I didn't think I'd ever paid for it that felt a bit miserable but this is obviously it, it, a bit different to people who are deliberately oh, no, I, 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 walking I, I, out I, I, great you're right. I, I, I try to be sort of over honest, if you like. I mean, I, I saw a very large sum of cash dropped outside on the floor, and I, I took that into the closest shop uh, that I could, that would be, it was outside, and sort of said that somebody might have dropped this. And I, I found a, a diamond ring very recently by an ice cream van. And what? That, it, I did. <laughs> How I, I, are you I, I, stumbling across all of the. Who oh, are you friends just, with? Come on, walk with me, Rosie. <laughs> I, I, I travel to the most extraordinary places. Uh, but I do, I think there's that sort of over sense. I guess it's how you're brought up as well, is that um, I, I think I work on the basis, and people talk about victimless crime, and this is what they're sort of saying in the article as well. That if this place is going to afford it, so what? Um, but I always think if, it, if it's thing, stuff you find in the street, that that could be you, and it'd be nice that somebody would hand it in uh, on, I think on that sort of just basis. Feel- if you found a wad of cash on the floor, you might think some criminal gang you've got rid of it would be after you. Well, I, I think that's Ooh, right. someone's I think savings for the week. Um, oh, <laughs> absolutely. Lisa, good morning. Has said, morning, Rosie. Come and spend an hour or two in my local waitrose. Just jaw dropping. Uh, it's oh, quite that right? sensational oh. that it's just become. Um, yeah, at least if you've got any sort of examples, I'd I'd love to hear hear them. Um, it just seems to be commonplace now. Um, final thing, Andrew, because we are um, pretty much out of time. Elon Musk is suggesting that um, if you use a Twitter, which we now call X, and I know you're a prolific tweeter, you've got to pay Absolutely. potentially. Is it worth a price tag? And if so, how much? Well, about 44 billion is what he paid. He's got to get his money back somehow. And these things do cost money. What, what he was, he was in a conversation with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Which, let's just say, that's them, also bizarre. That's where this story's come from. Yeah, it, it, it is strange. But, but these things come out. Whenever people in the public eye, they're always in strange positions. They're going to say things, knowing that the press is, is there, and it may not necessarily be the reason he's there. But he's saying he's t- moving towards uh, a small monthly payment for use of the system. And he's saying that it's, it's the do with uh, bots and making sure it's secure and so on and so forth. Um, He has obviously already introduced the premium side of it, so people can pay a little bit more. It used to be the blue tick, but it's now Mm. called X Premium, where you get uh, basically uh, additional uh, functionality. You can write longer and you can edit and money back. And I have uh, sympathy for this. I um, and people decide whether or not that's how they want to get their message out. But as we, we started with Russell Brand, I mean, his, he's made an absolute fortune from uh, obviously the social media side yeah. and a huge audience that he has. Uh, and I guess uh, you need to pay for it somehow. Hey, you've got to recoup that 44 billion. Andrew, thank you so much. Andrew Ebon, barrister, broadcaster, futurist and president of Octopus TV going through the papers with me this morning. Across the UK, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker, this is Times Radio.